Hi, I'm Lowell Joseph Gallen, and I am here with our guest, John Carrington Richards. John, thanks for being the guest on our show today. We are filming our Love Israel with Laura and Lowell interview series for New York's newest TV talk show, The Laura and Lowell Show. And our guest today, John Carrington Richards, will be talking with us about Bible prophecy. Where are we in the land of Israel? This is Givat HaRadar, is that what it's called? Well, let's say this, we're in a community outside of Jerusalem, Har Adar, Har Adar and just up the hill is what was called Radar Hill, where there still stands, and it's a historic site, a British radar station, which the British installed at the beginning of World War II, when Rommel was advancing through North Africa towards Egypt, and there was a Nazi-backed revolt in Iraq, and there were Italian and German bombers and fighters over the land of Israel, bombing Haifa and other places. So John lives near Radar Hill. It's the highest hill outside of Jerusalem, where the British put their radar station, and it's still there, like on the White Cliffs of Dover, to so get a sense of living history. John, what are we talking about today about the Bible prophecy in the Lost Tribes? Well, what I'm offering is uh, a solution to the international crisis that Israel is in at the moment involving the Iranians. Uh, Iran is so big and they're plant putting their stuff so deep underground, their nuclear uh, weapons, that it's uncertain whether Israel has the ability, the, the capability to knock it out in the way that they already did in the past to Iraq and Syria successfully. Success is not clear now and we're in a real crisis. We have top government officials saying we may be about to attack Iran, and we have other officials saying we can't do it alone. We're not big enough. And uh, I'm th I'm bringing up the Bible. And I'd like to add that John, who was almost ninety, they doesn't look it. No, no, I'm just a bit over eighty. <laughs> John was an officer with the Office of Strategic Services during World War II getting ready to parachute him into Nazi-occupied France. By the time it came along to parachute John into France, we had already invaded Normandy and overrun most of it. The Germans were in the retreat. John was with the Marshall Plan, a senior economist specializing in the world oil industry with the World Bank in Washington. John, if Israel wanted to go it alone and take out the Iranian reactors, does Israel have the firepower to do it? Well, I wish I could answer that question, Lowell. Um, I don't think anybody knows. Uh, we don't know how, how successful the Iranians have been in digging, and we don't know if our planes and our bombs will succeed, and which are in, they're in a small number, so we have to, it have to succeed fast. So I'm pointing toward another solution, which uh, found in uh, the Bible. So you say a coalition of nations, in this case being the Jews in the land of Israel, where we mostly represent the tribes of Judah and Benjamin and Simon, I think, and nations that you believe would be the lost tribes of Israel nations that the Bible talks about. Right. You got it. What nations might those be today? <laughs> those nations are the nations which were involved in the conquest of Israel in 1917, 1918, World War One. They were led by the British, but there were five other nations involved. Uh, and they are on the ground here, there were Britain, uh, New Zealand, and Australia. And then there were three others in Europe, 
who took the place of the British and Australian New Zealand troops. In other words, to invade Israel, Britain took out large forces from the European front and the Allies in Europe agreed to what the British wanted to do. They signed the Balfour Declaration and they said, okay, we'll have the casualties in Europe while you're having the casualties, 18,000 casualties dead in, in Israel. So British, New Zealand and uh, Australian, the Anzacs, Australian, yeah. New Zealand, the Anzacs and the British provided the manpower to liberate Palestine, and then what was meant became Mandate Palestine from the Turks and the Germans. Yes. In 1917 and under General Lord Allenby. Yes. Edmund Allenby. And who is taking the place of those troops on the Western Front was, in France with Germany? Was uh, the United States, France, and Italy. And they, uh, si they signed that they agreed to what Britain was planning to do. And in fact, the French and the Italians sent token mili tiny military forces to take part here in Israel as a symbol of the fact that they were doing the backup in Europe, and in fact in Europe they may have suffered more casualties than the British and the Anzacs would suffer here because the Turks were a lot less tougher to fight than uh, fighting the Germans in Europe. So this on, was a very bloody business. On Mount, on Mount Scopus where the Hebrew University has its campus, right as you come into the University is a cemetery for the thousands of a cemetery and memorial for the thousands of uh, Australian for the Anzacs, the, the Australian and New Zealand troops that fell uh, liberating uh, the land of Israel from the Turks and the Germans in 1917, which is when they marched into Jerusalem. They got to Jerusalem in uh, November of 1917. There, uh, there were 2,000 killed of the Anzacs and 15,000 Brits. So, British. Uh, Jerusalem had been under Muslim control since Saladin, the great uh, Sultan, who was Kurdish, led Muslim armies to uh, liberate Jerusalem from the European Catholic Crusaders. And one liberation was followed by another. The reason I call that a liberation is that when the European Catholic Crusaders took Jerusalem from the Muslims, they killed all Muslim men, women, and children, and Jewish men, women, and children in the city. When Saladin liberated, and I use the term intentionally, Jerusalem from the European Catholic Crusaders in 1187 CE, which is the term we use for AD, he let the Christians in the city go. There was a ransom money paid, he didn't murder the men, women, and children. And then he invited the Jews back into the city. And the oldest synagogue, we have the Ramban synagogue, in what is now the Jewish quarter, was built by the Jews who returned in the Saladin. And 800 years later, is that right with my mathematics? Uh, in 1917, so General Allenby took it back. And it was the first time again that it was under Christian rule. And then the British became... Well, they were since, what, about 1850. Britain was the main protector of Jewish resettlement in the land of Israel up until about World War II. And after World War II, more or less, it's been the United States of America. Did I get it right? Yeah. I learned this from right. John. Well, so obviously it was very, very accurate and right in every way. So let's come back to Iran. Iran, under the control of Khomeiniak, lunatic, <laughs> Shiites, <laughs> is getting ready to get a bomb and Israel is not happy. So you're saying a coalition of nations would be more effective in taking care of that problem than Israel doing it alone and the nations you have in mind are Britain, Australia, New Zealand, the United States, Italy and France in a coalition. Well, the Lost Tribes nations in John's opinion. Well it's not just my opinion but there are four prophets who say, who all agree, that uh, at the time of the reconquest, 
which they foresaw in the future, it would be a combination of Jews and the lost tribes that would do it. So the Jews were also involved in 1917-18. In fact, they formed military units that took part in the reconquest. And uh, there were the three nations here and the three backing them in Europe. So I understand what those four prophets are saying, and I can quote them if you want. Uh, I can just I'll give you the references, is that uh, in, in the reconquest of Israel you will have the Jews and the lost tribes. Well, we don't have time in this interview to go through the citations themselves, but could, would you tell us the names of the four prophets you are referring well, to? The four prophets are Isaiah, Jeremiah, uh, Zechariah, uh, and what's the shortest one? Shortest prophet. Malachi? Jonah? John's going to check. <laughs> Isaiah, Zechariah. Zeca uh, I never could remember this guy's name. Obadiah. Obadiah. Obadiah, Jeremiah, Zechariah, and Isaiah, the four prophets that John is using as the basis for his uh, analysis of who the lost tribes nations might be today. Well, I would say not might be, but are. are. Because they describe the military reconquest of the land, and they say who it is, and it's the twelve tribes divided into two groups, the lost tribes and the Jews. John, from your research, how much longer do we have before Iran has an active nuclear bomb? Yes. I. What's our time frame? I have... Our I, window of opportunity, how fast is it closing to deal with this problem? Well, I mean, people are saying something has to be done by this autumn. Well, this autumn is like in a month or two because it's now August. It's now August. August. September 1st is this so coming Shabbat. now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Something has to happen soon. Uh, you could, right now, the government, the Israeli government, could announce that it is opening an area in Israel, an area enclosed in a boundary so we don't get bothered by missionaries, an area for members of those six nations to immigrate. And there are people trying to immigrate from those countries all the time and getting turned away. So all you have to do is open the door. And by doing that you will symbolize the, you're taking steps toward the reunion of the Twelve Tribes. What about a military base? The United States very yes. quietly has a number of bases yeah. in Israel which are almost never discussed in the press, which more or less have extraterritorial status. Israelis can't even go into them. There's a very big one, uh, where is that one? Down in the Negev. I mean these are not little, these are not little places with a, a warehouse stockpiling equipment. These are, these are bases where people live and work, which are in effect uh, like Vatican City and Rome. Bad comparison. But where they have uh, their extraterritorial areas. Uh, you've met, spoken before about more bases which would represent the forces of these nations perhaps to stockpile nuclear weapons. Not that Israel doesn't have its own, though it never confirms or denies. And to help with the defense against uh, Iranian weapons, which I think the Americans are already doing. Right. That's why they're here, I think. Uh, yes, we, we could have bases, we could have settlements of civilians, uh, anything that would symbolize the start of the reunion, and basing it on these four prophets. Well, here we are, concluding our first interview with John for the Lauren Lowell Show on uh, a hill outside of Jerusalem, which is the highest point, and to the north we have Lebanon with thousands of rockets and missiles pointed right here. To the south we have Gaza, also bristling with rockets and missiles. And to the east we have Persia, Iran, bristling with rockets and missiles, all pointed at us. So on that happy note, I want to thank John for being a guest on our show and 
We're not afraid because we know there is the God of Israel who protects His people and runs the universe. Amen. And that as long as we have faith in Him, then we have the confidence to do what we have to do, and we don't have to be afraid of any created being, certainly not human beings. Would we agree on that, John? Well, I'm a little bit afraid. <laughs> okay, so... But we, I'm assuming that God's plan, as shown in the Bible, is the way to go. So thanks a lot, John, for being our guest today. And thank you for having and me. And thank you for watching this installment of our show.